welcome to Esports in 30. I'm Brody Moore, and I'm chilling. With your face, what's up, dude? What's poppin', homie? I'm so excited to talk about some fighting games today, bro. Yeah. Yo, you know what happened this past weekend? Damn, Summit, baby. Summit, yeah, man. Yo, you've been on that Ultimate game. You you play everything. I play you've everything. You've been on the baby. Ultimate game. I've been definitely on Ultimate, man. I play that top tier Lucina, and I'm ready to rock. Uh, I'm ready to rock. You just no, that's it. Just Lucina. Just no Lucina, pockets. Man. No pockets, baby. I only stick with one girl, and that's my girl Yo, all day. I'm uh, monogamous. Am I? Am I have to wreck you with my puff? Oh, in the green room at some you, point? You ain't gonna wreck me, baby. You bro, ain't gonna wreck me at all. Bro, bro, that's the one game I think that I'll, I'll actually have, like maybe a bit of an upper hand on you, out of any of the FTC games at all. Actually, that's a, that's a good question. Ultimate, and just Smash in general. Yes. They call it a brawler. Do you, include it in the, do you include it in the FTC family? I do, because it's a fighting game, and we are all fighting games, baby. Mm -hmm. Don't matter what, if you got platforms, you got air in the sky, you got a tri-dash, or you're an X-Men character, it, you're a fighting game to me. All right, so d does that include uh, PlayStation All-Stars? Yes. Oh, it does? Yeah. Okay, well, there's a lot of you know, that game. We need another one. We need a second PlayStation All-Stars. Kratos was, was the ish, dude. Well, I love trash, but you know what? Smash Ultimate Summit. I'm, I'm happy about it because yeah. it, it gave me an opportunity to see a lot of the personalities behind the competitive scene Ultimate. Mm -hmm. And that's something that a lot of tournaments don't really get to highlight. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to talk about that today, bro. You well, you you love that uh, that whole chill feel, right? And that's why we're here right now. Well, that's so Summit here, was your was your thing then, right? I love the ca casting couch. It's yeah. amazing. Perfect. Well, as you just said, on esports and 30 Wednesdays are dedicated to FGC, and today it's all about Smash Ultimate. Before we bring in a very special guest to chat with us, we got to check out some highlights from the Smash Ultimate Summit. Oh, it is. Wait, yeah. all yeah. this. Yeah. Sorry, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. The first. Okay, yeah, first. Ooh, oh, the imagination. Oh, 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 that is oh, 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 55. My gosh. Gosh. It's not too far from. Oh, oh he's shielded too. He's off stage now. Has to burn the that's bike. A, that's a huge relief for Sack right now too. Yeah, yeah, now he can actually go in. Dash deck will kill here though. Oh, oh, oh and the bike throw. Nice. For the weight though. Yeah. Trying both. to intimidate him, making him oh, think that he's gonna continue to back here. I like that Dash deck got a corner instead yeah. of doing that defensive option, oh. picked an aggressive one. Yeah. Okay. Air doors. Oh, oh, the stitch the stitch frame right at the end. Oh, really nice coverage. Back here, this might be it. Oh, he's have his bike back right now. Oh, oh. Wow. doesn't matter. What a clean Seriously. Comeback. Yeah. Back here. Oh, yeah. It, and I don't think he actually wanted to grab the legs oh, there. Nice idea. But still keeping the pressure off on the stage. Back here. Oh, what do you, what do you, what do, you do as Olimar there? Nothing. Nothing. You die. <laughs> yeah, you die. You die. <laughs> you die. Please, bro. Okay, the back air, oh, only weak hit. You gotta watch those rolls, bro. See if Sword's gonna catch you. Oh, oh yes! My God. Oh, my, I felt it. He <laughs> popped back, we popped off. He didn't know what the, he didn't know if he should pop off or not. <laughs> he, he didn't know if he should pop off or not. Now it's another <laughs> double purple We have blue another 3-0. Oh, they have another 3 -0. Yeah, how's he gonna? Okay, back to stage. Oh, oh, yeah, oh my god. god. And a three stop. A three stop. That was a lot of trouble. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Great recovery. Drop in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that was clean. That was clean. That was clean. Uh oh. Trying to touch the ground safely. The lineup okay. is not the best, though. <laughs> no, yeah, the lineup really not looking so great right now. Let me get a purple. I need it. I need it tonight. <laughs> oh. Got him. Oh. This? Did he go get a desperate? For we reason. I, I feel like he's going like almost tunnel. Oh, vision. yeah. The buzz like, actually okay, just That's it. Oh, and Leo that's it. wins. Yeah. Smash yeah. ultimate at uh, Summit. The first ever Ultimate Summit was absolutely dominated by MK Leo. And to break down everything from the event, we've got Smash commentator D1. D1 main grab. What's up, dude? What's up, man? Thank you for having me, homie. Thank you for joining us. Uh, just straight up, just to tell people out there, what is Summit and why is it so loved? by players and fans around the world? Uh, one of the reasons that many people clamor to have an, a summit for their particular game is because first off, it's a, that event is a good representation of all the skill that's usually at the event. And for those people that get voted in by their fans, it's a good opportunity for them to level up. So you get, you get a really, imagine just a house full of all the best players mm -hmm. and some up and coming players who always wanted that shot to be the best to have the opportunity to go to an invitational where it, it only has this small focus group of players and nobody else, you can get quick in just a short amount of days. A lot of the players, after attending a summit, usually end up saying that it's like the best tournament that they've ever attended. And 
They also uh, mentioned the fact that they've gotten that summit boost, right, because of the fact that they were in a house with, like, all these great players for, like, more than, like, three, what was it, like, for about four days? Because since there's mm -hmm. a media day, these guys get a plenty amount of time to just grind, 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 and learn matchups at a rapid pace because they're playing with people who are already refined with the way that they approach the game that they play. Mm -hmm. Yo, so just let's let's get into it then. Um, off the start, Drew Face, what, like, we talked about MK Leona's dominance. What do we see from him? Oh, man, look, he went full-time with Lucia, man, and that character really, really works for him, man. I don't know why he just doesn't pick her all the time. Like, he wins everything with her. I, I wish he just... He just finally chooses Lucien instead of going with that with that big near Ike. Do you want you agree? Well, I will say one thing. Um, Lucina is considered by many members of the community as a top five character in the game, mm -hmm. uncontested. Like she's just really, really strong. But at the same time, I think MK Leo being so dominant as he already is, playing Wolf, uh, Greninja, Ike, uh, along with Lucina. If the man is already procuring like great results, right? If he's yielding amazing results with the characters that he's playing, I I feel like spreading himself thin across other. Uh, he's I, I don't think he's spreading himself thin playing these other characters because mm -hmm. the way I see it is that ultimate is a game where you probably might have to have a lot of characters underneath your belt because of the fact that there's just 70 plus characters and mm -hmm. you might there's have a lot to play the counter pick war against your opponent, right? They're like a lot of stages, maybe your character may not excel on one particular stage, so you might want to opt for a different character on another stage. So, in the case of MKLeo, I do agree that if he were to go full-time Lucina, he probably could already take it. But because of the fact that he's already got so many good matchups down pat with his Ike, with his newly, uh, his new Greninja and his Wolf, that he also, you know, his Wolf he picked up randomly to enter a, uh, an event called the Heart of Battle mm -hmm. in Southern California. He, he, he saw Zach Ray uh, and he was like intrigued with how amazing he played the character. So he's like, all right, you know what? Let me see if I can try it with myself. And he actually ended up uh, doing really well taking the tournament with that character. So, you know, he can he definitely can do it um, with any character that he puts his hands on, as, at least if they have the right enough tools. Like, I won't say he, I, I, I'm not, I'm, I'd be hard pressed to find him like do well with a little Mac, right? That character is pretty hard. But then again, this is actually yeah. what we're talking about. We'll see. Low tears, man. Yeah, that's <laughs> low tears. <laughs> Look, you just man. laughing at the low tears. No, you got to give respect to them. But uh, you know, I, some people may have said that you know because Tweak wasn't at Summit, that this result could have been different. Uh, or do you think MK Leo still would have been you know as dominant? It's it's that's like a very interesting point. You know, Tweak. I feel like uh, that's the other player that's like right there on par with MKLeo. You know, after that big win at Frostbite 2019, people were like, were were convinced again that Tweak had what it takes because mm -hmm. prior to Frostbite, no, prior to Frostbite at Genesis, he didn't even get in the top eight, and that had a lot of people scratching their heads, wondering like, whoa, you know, maybe there might actually be some cracks in his armor, right? Maybe he may not be as good as everyone's uh, saying, or he, you know, might have just had a bad day. Going into Frostbite, he definitely proved to a lot of us that he does have what it takes as a player. And I think uh, it's so hard to say, right? Because at Summit, so many people, like those 16 players in that house, all got an opportunity to expose each other's weaknesses within that amount of time that they had to keep playing each other over and over. Yeah. What I really loved about this particular Summit, you know, Summit event is that at this event, I heard that a lot of the players that were there, nobody held back. A lot of players actually played each other. They gave tips. Okay. Sometimes at uh, other summits, melee summits, I won't name any players, but I've heard that there are players who would purposely avoid practicing against other players so that you wouldn't figure out how to fight them. And because of this, sometimes players would have to go out of their way to try to get a player who who, who's really good with a certain character so that they can have practice. Some sort of matchup experience, yeah. Turn. Yeah, yeah, matchup practice. So uh, at this particular event, uh, I, you know, even with the mic that they had, when you listen to the matches, um, the mic that they, um, they had like this little uh, mic near the near the setup where yeah. the players were playing, you'd hear players ask each other, what did I do wrong? They're all trying to learn and they're, they would mm -hmm. exchange information back and forth with each other. And that made me really happy. I, I really think that if Tweak was there, he probably would have a high chance of making it into the grand finals like you know it's hard because i don't want to compare 
you know, just seeing how Gluttony did, right? Gluttony, Gluttony from France, mm -hmm. he did really well with Wario getting third place. It makes me wonder, you know, even though Gluttony and Tweak are two completely different Wario players, maybe we might have seen some really sick results from Tweak as well. But, uh, you know, it's it's hard to say, because if you really look at it, there were uh, the, the, res the results, the results were pretty interesting going into uh, Smash Summer. We had a player that got second place um, with with all the amazing players that were already there in the house. It was it was pretty hype for me to see the buzz get like second place, right? I was just yeah. like, whoa, what an insane losers run. So I, I, I have no idea in which direction it would um, the bracket would go in. But if if we were betting men, we would probably say that an MKLeo tweak. Grand Finals wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility. Yeah. Well, uh, Drew, that, I think that was someone else on your radar, too, was the buzz you just mentioned there. Oh, man. What do we see there? That purple Pikmin did mad <laughs> work, man. It ain't all of that did that work. That, all that purple Pikmin. Uh, the Bruce man, just really impressive. He even pulled out Rosalina for some matchups. Uh, that yes. was surprising, man. Tell us about that, D1. Yeah, so Rosalina is a character that got a lot of changes in Ultimate which started to make players actually not want to play the character as much, and yeah. they wanted to go for more, you know, potent, uh, uh, more stronger characters, characters that feel like they can actually not have to work as hard in order to win with. And you know, that was—I feel like that was a general theme for a lot of the, a lot of the top, some of the top tiers that we've seen in ult, in ult from Smash Bros. Ultimate. You look at Sheik; Sheik was pretty dominant in the mm -hmm. meta. Not as dominant now. Same with Diddy. And, you know, you look at Rosalina and a couple others, it's like, whoa, what happened? Where are they in this current meta? Some of them are just not, you know, they're, they're not as strong. But, you know, going into the new patch with 3.0, I'm hoping that we get to see certain characters get buffed because the top tiers are definitely getting more and more fleshed out to the point where people who probably wanted to play certain characters are, n are, are finally getting convinced that, okay, maybe I should play, you know, uh, what is it, <clears throat> uh, Peach, uh, Peach, Pichu, uh, Lucina, Wolf, or even Olimar, right? Yeah. Like, like there's some other characters that are uh, that are up there that are really good as well. But those five are the ones that I definitely see well, doing a really good job of just hanging in the top. But looking at the buzz, you know, going, going Rosalina, that was a big shocker. And honestly, when he was fighting against Sam Sora, I kind of looked. Uh, it, it really looked like it was just like even, you know, the way you, the buzz was just approaching the matchup. Samsor was having a really hard time getting inside, and that's usually the way that the buzz, uh, you know, played the character. He did a really good job of just separating um, himself and Luma and just controlling that space. Whereas Samsor, if he wanted to approach, he really couldn't, you know, because Peach, Peach is a character who a lot of people have been talking about, uh, 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 have been claiming as top tier, like the, not even yeah. just top tier, the best in the game. And here's one of the reasons why, right? The character's damage output, it's really strong. The approach options, extremely safe. Um, she may not have the best like speed, like on the ground, it's really, she's, she's the type of character that you can definitely run circles around or even keep out, which is why even if she may be the best character in the game, she's quite fair because of the fact that she's a character that you can at, at least like, it, you can make it really tough for her to advance on you if you have the right tools. Mm -hmm. And another thing that I wanted to touch on that makes her really potent is the fact that every single other character in the game, if they decide to go for a short hop aerial, you know, when you just like graze the jump button and you do a and a, yep. a jump, uh, you know, an air, a, a jump really low to the ground and you're able to do an aerial, this aerial is hit with a point um, eighty five times multiplier. So the, the the damage is reduced because you, okay. you get hit with a point eighty five. Uh, multiplier but peach when she does her float really low to the ground she gets a she gets 1.0 times damage so basically if you do a full jump yeah. you get like the max damage output for a move as opposed to a short hop peach could float extremely low to the ground and still be able to 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 get the full hop damage yeah, that's, because of this that's a lot of an opening on you that could lead to 50 dude yeah. or death well, that, that, just, that just leads me to, like, to think that right now is like, with so many characters, is it like, and with the ability, you know, with patches buffing and nerfing characters, is it a good idea to just stick to a character or is it a good idea to, to you know, just kind of jump to the top tiers? Like, Drew, are you always jumping to the top tiers or do you like to stick with your character? I'm a top tier enthusiast. I'm definitely right. jumping to top tiers all day, like, baby. All day, baby. Come on. I'm trying to win. <laughs> I appreciate the fact that you said enthusiast because people use another word. Yeah. <laughs> you avoided it. <laughs> definitely avoiding that word, but you know, I'm a definitely big enthusiast about top tiers. 
Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know if, the, if, if you think we're going to see a lot of switch rounds D1 from uh, players. Do you think we're going to see people kind of settle in on they're just their favorites and stick with it? Honestly, because of the fact that a lot of top players are afraid of nerfs um, hitting their characters, it makes sense for them to have a couple characters under their belt, i.e., you know, like MK Loyo, right? He has Lucina Ike, Greninja Wolf, and you look at the buzz, he has like Olimar, Rosalina, Palatina. Like, to have all those characters under, uh, 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 you know, underneath your belt, it really helps if one of your mains does get hit, because then at least if that character gets hit, you still have other characters that you can still rely on, right? Um, and plus, again, with the way that the stages are in Ultimate, sometimes on certain stages you might want a character that can benefit from the platforms, where they could just hang out underneath and use projectiles. You know, projectile zoning is very, very strong right now in the early meta. I remember at one point people were talking about how heavies were very strong in the meta, but uh, just like every just like every Smash game, at some point people figure out how to how to destroy those characters. But mm -hmm. for now, um, I think it does make sense to have multiple characters under your belt because you just never know what Sakurai is going to do next. I do want to touch on some of the other players we saw there because we haven't talked about any of the melee players. <laughs> um, that's about to change. Let's check out how some of the best melee fared at the Ultimate Summit. Recovery so good, but the up B, the clutch wall jump will be enough. One more chance. Oh, yeah. untackable. 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 I think I, I thought like well, maybe maybe Bowser is too big, but I feel like Mutant should be able to di uh, di that laser a little better. At, at, uh, oh, oh no no way. Way. no! Ninety-five percent with the with the rage and the Bowser oh. and, and Bear Jim. And oh, oh, he oh, if he actually roll up there, if he roll up there, he he covered everything. Oh, oh my god, yeah, there's a roll yeah, there. Yeah, there's your roll. <laughs> yeah, he's in his head getting that grab too. Very, very so much pressure. So. Very close for a back throw. Oh, oh no. what? what? Yeah. Oh, he he must still have time to do that after the down smash. That's oh, oh my god, oh, he wants to throw it Okay, this back throw off stage. Oh, what an air dodge. That was actually so close. Oh, is that? Ah! Oh, he goes oh, way oh, out there. Oh! oh and whoa. Man. Thanks, Leffen is. Killing it right now with the Ivysaur. Right now. The charge don't know. Oh, oh, man. oh you ran grabbing oh, my down leg down boy. There. That's, that's wrong, man. <laughs> that's wrong. Okay. Uh, Off stage. Oh, Flare oh. Blitz. Flare Blitz, Blitz is going to take it in a three stock wow. and from Leffen. Oh, man. Way up there. Yeah. No way going to throw that. Okay. Oh, oh, again, oh, I told you, man. Yeah. It's just, you're not. Sure, and what, how to edge guard? You don't have the timing, and Sonora just eats that up. What in particular do you not like about him? He don't stop moving. <laughs> and I mean, oh. Fox too. Oh no! Oh, oh, no. Daddy had attack, no tech. Oh man! <laughs> yes. And he's at your percent. That's so, looking rough for Fluff right now. Yeah. Oh, oh that's great timing on that first match. He stock from a big left. I feel like he's low key trying to uh, bait out the parry. Maybe. Oh, oh. that's close. And the there it is. In the 3 0. Nicely done for big left. The 3 0 over Fluff. The wrong way. But I expect Cosmos to come through with an up smash. Oh, oh you're right. Thanks. <laughs> okay, How bro. did you know? Oh! oh my God. That's still nice. been effect with nice. the Swiss. Oh my God. That was nice. so sick. Baby. So, as we Ooh. saw, there were no melee pros in the top eight of Summit, but they no doubt had some good moments. D1, I'm just kind of curious on your thoughts uh, on the melee boys, how they did this past weekend. Honestly, I'm really happy to see how these guys have been, like, just getting better and better mm -hmm. with regard to the game. Like, yeah, they might not have gotten top eight, but a lot of people have already expected that. If anything, the best takeaway from this is the fact that Ultimate is a game, um, you know, contrary contra to Smash 4, where that if you're actually really good at the game, um, it will show. Like, mm -hmm. the, we've been seeing consistent results for a lot of players super early, right? Like, players who are expected to do really well would at least, like, do a good job of just hanging up in the top, especially, like, when you see, like, the way MKLeo has been approaching the game. Mm -hmm. Like, he... He's been really consistent looking at even even the buzz outside of Frostbite. He's been really consistent. But now going into, like, the melee side of things, um, 
they've been working really hard. Armada was the player who I've been watching a lot because already Leffen was everyone's like far away like pick that you know, like out of like all the players yeah, that's yeah, yeah. the strongest, right? You look at Leffen, he took a character called Pokemon Trainer who wasn't even top tier and yet he was still doing really a, a really really great job like at, at at a lot of events shocking the world right like oh my god look at this you know we actually have melee people who like the game and are doing well at the game but armada the player who has like also insane work ethic just like leffen has been only has been solo maining inkling and his inkling has been like really really impressive to me i i was so proud of him to even go as far to travel to ohio from sweden yep. Sweden. the man hopped on a flight went to the loft house to practice with cosmo sweet katara falls all those guys there he knows that the, that house has like some of the best players uh, in the planet when it comes to super smash brothers ultimate so he actually went out of his way to grind and you know see if he can do his best and he actually beat a player who i expected to get into the top eight you know a player who has been focusing a lot on streaming lately um and you know people have been wondering if this guy is washed up or or you know or what um zero right um who's part of t uh, tempo i thought i thought we were going to see zero get into the top eight i really think he has what it takes he has an amazing mind for the game and he has some really good characters unfortunately for him going into the game he had like a really tough character crises, which a lot of players did have. And because of this, it kind of held him back from being able to maximize the potential of whatever character he put his hands on. Um, in any event, you know, going into <clears throat> going into pools, uh, zero, I, I believe zero lost to Light and MK Leo. So he like started off already in the loser's bracket. And then when he faced off against Armada in the loser's bracket, like Armada already just like dispatched him out uh, leaving him at 13th place. But, you know, when I watched Zero versus Armada, it still felt like it was a really good match. Like, I feel like Zero still has what it takes. It's just that we don't really get to see him enter uh, many events. But Armada, yeah. the fact that Armada got that win yeah. was amazing. Then Armada went on to lose against Cosmo. So even if he lost, a lot of people were saying that Armada, knowing how he took, knowing how he approached Melee, where he would sit there and practice, practice, practice. Even when I visited the venue on Sunday, if he wasn't playing in tournament, he sat down next to somebody and he would just grind, 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 yeah. ask questions, grind, grind, grind. And I feel like knowing that Armada was that guy that optimized everything when it came to Peach and Fox when he played Melee, he's going to do the same thing with Inkling. And it's, I'll be honest, man, Cosmos even mentioned it. Armada's punish game, super strong. His tech chases, the best out of all the, mm -hmm. of all the Inklings. But when it comes to ledge trapping, that's usually where Cosmos excels. Like, that's because of prior Smash 4 experience, right? Where if an opponent's at the edge, you do a good job of just not letting them leave that. Or even letting them take center stage, for, the, mm -hmm. uh, for that matter. But um, when, it, when it comes to, like, a lot of the melee players, they're really good at just pushing the advantage state. If they get that one hit, it's almost like you watch a Marvel player, right? They just keep on going. They keep pushing. Yeah, so yeah. it's really sick to see Armada and Leffen do as well as they did. And I have to say, it was a great surprise even to see... Muta King hanging out in ninth place among those guys. Muta King, a player who's been favoring the heavies, Bowser, Incineroar, right? Looking at those characters, it's like, what are you doing, Muta King? When we think of Muta King, we look back at, like, that Marth that was that just, like, Ken combos people to an oblivion in Melee. And, like, he also had a really good Fox. He had an amazing sheet for certain counterpick matchups. But then when we looked at him in Ultimate, it's like... What, what, what characters are you playing? And he kind of mentioned on his broadcasts, you know, whenever you check his live broadcasts on Twitch, that one of the reasons why he didn't want to invest time so much in Lucina or Wolf is because of the fact that he was afraid that the characters were going to get patched. But thankfully, you know, Sakurai not really b being the head of, like, the balance team, the, the, uh, like, he has his own balance team, right? He doesn't really have a heavy hand on the patches when it comes mm -hmm. to, like, balance decisions. Thanks to that, we might just see these characters that are really good just stay good. So, um, you know, I'm very proud of um, seeing how, how far Muta King has gone. Muta, mm -hmm. King, um, Muta King, of course, uh, he, he's even really motivated to want to get better in the game after his performance at, at, at the mm -hmm. event. As far as Plup is concerned, Plup and Mango finishing at 13th place, those guys I still think are really strong. Like, people were saying Mango... I'll get there. Yeah, Mango is it's definitely a, still a really scary opponent to play. There's just a couple things these players have to have to tie up. But when you play against them, you sweat, bro. It's not it's not easy. So I'm excited. 
to see yeah. what's going to happen in the future for these guys. You know, Plup and Mango, they have... They have what it takes. They mm -hmm. definitely want to keep playing. It didn't sound like the guys were discouraged and said, all right, I'm going back to Melee. It was more like, all right, let me ask more questions. Yeah. Let me get more games with the guys well, and see what I can do they might, to get better. They might have to start doing that. I mean, like, uh, hold my hand, Drew. Melee is not an evil. I know slightly old news, but we still have to touch on it a bit here. I'm just with that happening, is this going to have a big impact? Quickly, uh, if you can let us know your thoughts on it. Uh, on Melee, or is Melee still going to be something that's just going to thrive on its own thing? Or is this that first push we're going to see at Ultimate being that forefront of Smash? So um, I I agree with like two of the points that you mentioned, I, or the questions that you had, where, yes, for, just to confirm, Melee will continue to live on. Yes, it's mm -hmm. definitely declining as far as viewership is concerned on Twitch for home broadcasts, right? Mm -hmm. Because it just makes perfect sense to broadcast Ultimate since you can actually just play online with other people and grind. Even though, yeah, there's like, you know, ways that people found to like grind with each other on Melee. Uh, regardless, um, Ultimate seems to be that that hot thing that everyone's been playing recently. Yeah. And as like th there was a message that a lot of the leaders in the community have been echoing like far and wide, especially once that, that, that video dropped where it's like, you know, thank you for the many years. Um, <clears throat> The, the, the community will continue to stand on its own two feet, regardless of whether or not like DreamHack supports it, Evil supports it, or any other like big company. This isn't the first time that Melee has dealt with things like this. You know, Melee at one point was supported by MLG, then MLG dropped it from the circuit, then Brawl was on the circuit. You know, like it, this, it, these things happen all the time, right? It, it, it's hard sometimes for people to try to sell like sponsorships against such an old game, right? When you have a game like Ultimate that can be played on monitors, all of a sudden tournament organizers are like, cool, now I can actually seek out sponsorships from people that have these headsets, you know, these uh, these monitors, et cetera, et cetera. All the gaming peripherals and stuff like that. Why? Because, you know, these these games are more up to date. They don't, it's not like we're using the archaic technology with the with these, you know, uh, big back TVs, the CRTs. Bro, I still I have got, one in my I room. I got 20 CRTs in my basement still. Really? So, I have, it takes up a lot of space. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, dude. I only have one. This one CRT I have used to be with me. Uh, it, it, I mean, it's still with me. It, it's been with me since <laughs> New York City. Like, I've had this bad boy. It's a Samsung CRT. It's so good, dude. It's so still good to me, and it works to this day. So, um, yeah, uh, I still think Melee is... The, it, it's still going to be there. Yeah. Like, every single major Smash event outside of EVO, like EVO we always saw as that event that just like helps bring a lot of eyes and newcomers to our scene, but it, whether or not we're part of EVO, we never felt like, we, we never felt like it was the end of the world for us. Mm -hmm. It sucks that to everybody else from the outside looking in, when they see that a game's not at EVO, they immediately write it off as, oh, the game's dead, yada, yada. I guess there's no reason for me to be as invested in it, which kind of sucks, but well, I mean, true at, all. at Genesis 6, Genesis 6, had fat numbers, right? When it came to the viewership for, for Melee on Final Day. We were up there like 150K plus, right? Like just so many people were tuning in to watch the Melee yeah. Finals. Um, and uh, honestly, like end of the day, I still think that we're, Melee is gonna be here to stay. Yeah. It just made, people may not be as invested that's, that's, in it. That's my game, I, I love it. And I hope so. Um, man, we need to do a podcast with you, but I do, I, I have a couple more things to get to here quickly. 30 seconds, see if you agree with us right now. Of course, we talked a lot about MK Leal, but Drew, who's our player of the week? Man, that is Liquid the Booze. He's is, godlike. You, you on that train, the buzz? You giving it to him? Honestly, man, the buzz is nice, bro. <laughs> I, 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 I feel like this past weekend, everybody was just saying, the buzz is one of my favorite players. You know, go, seeing how the buzz joined Team Liquid prior to, Smash, prior to this game. In Smash 4, a lot of people were trying to do this parallel where they're like oh i wonder if a, a, the buzz is the h box of melee right but then when they got a better chance to to meet the buzz they realized he's just his own person and uh, whatever stigma th there was with the uh, with the buzz's name due to the fact that he might have played characters that are quote unquote lame he it, the, you know the moment they got a chance to hang with him at the ultimate summit they realized all right regardless of whatever characters he plays he's still a really chill guy and he does his best 
to try to actually like share information with people and help people act, you know, learn how, mm -hmm. ways to beat him so that he can even make himself stronger. He's like, if you find counters to the way I play, then I could help find counters to the counters that you have to my way of playing, which is like one of the most like woke things that any player could yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm really proud of him. And I think he, you know, it, it, it's good to see him bounce back mm -hmm. after that shocking 17th place you know go when he when he entered the uh genesis genesis he did really well the buzz is that player who usually always hangs in the top five of any event it's either he's like uh, you know it's either he gets like within the top five top four or he wins right you rarely see him get outside of top eight but frostbite was a shocker losing to tease pac-man and void's pichu void who was actually not he wasn't even confident that he was going to win against the Buzz, mm -hmm. but the, he ended up beating him. So going into Summit, seeing that impressive losers run where he was able to go through the likes of Samsora, Nairo, Cosmos, Armada, you know, um, it, right after losing to Zach Ray in the winner's quarterfinals of Summit, it was really, really cool to see him even beating Gluttony, uh, Glutony, you know, as well. You're like, I'm really proud of him. And I think Liquid did a really good job picking up this guy because he, he, he mm -hmm. he's a player that is very smart he's entertaining and you know I, ju I just see like sky's the limit for this guy yeah like, hey now I, I got uh, we had some questions uh, from fans on uh, online um, I can only get to one right now but I got okay. uh, a question from uh, Kwan. he asked what was your favorite set overall from Summit hmm what was my favorite set overall yeah, if someone had to go Summit. back and watch one from the past weekend just one set what would it be honestly I would have to go with the Buzz versus Sam Sora, cause right. like yeah, yeah, you want that, Drew? That's my set. I, yeah, honestly, like I, you know, there's so many good sets that happen at that particular event, but seeing how the Buzz, well, it, it, it was like down to the wire. Everybody was screaming when they were like, how? Cause I was at the yeah. Summit House and they they all were going nuts, screaming at the edge of their seat. Seeing the Buzz bust out Rosalina, come on, bro, the story writes itself right there. Like that's his old boo that he used to play. <laughs> In Smash 4, then he's like, you know what? I'm sorry, you know, you're, you're not a side boo. I, I still got love for you. Come back. You know, I, <laughs> you, you gotta know, bring it back sometimes. You're my man, yeah. You gotta bring yeah, it back so sometimes. Shout, shout, shout out to, uh, shout out to uh, the Rosalina actually making an appearance and winning. That was the best part yeah. about it. The fact that Rosalina came back and won for the set for the buzz against a very strong opponent. Sam Sora is a play that a lot of people put, like, probably in the top five echelon of players. Like, he's the best peach, and you're... It, you should never be shocked when he's like in the in the top eight. You yeah. Know? So it was good. That was a really really good job by the buzz. Uh, and I have to say, dude, it's really scary seeing how man you, you think you would be able to know how to beat him if you uh, if you beat his Olimar, but then he yeah. always has something up his sleeve. So yeah, great job to him, dude. That was that mm -hmm. was impressive. Hey D1, man, we're out of time right now. We're gonna have to have you back, but I just want to say thanks so much for chatting with us today. Thank you so much for having me, dude. It's been a pleasure. All right, Drew. Overall now, we're getting Ultimate's just blowing up. It's 2019, a fresh start for, for this game. What are we seeing right now from Ultimate overall? You know what? We see Melee players coming in. and This is the real 2020, baby. Ain't no Fox. It's 77 characters, and they're all godlike. That's, that's the thing. Okay, so who, who are you main in that? Or like, are you, stick, you say you're jumping everywhere. I'm jumping everywhere. You know what? I play Lucina. I'm a top tier Of course. He, he's <laughs> top tier enthusiast. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to have to try to not get bodied by you at one point in uh, the green room there. But that's all we got for eSports in 30 Day. Tomorrow's show is dedicated to Rocket League. Yes. And I'll have Lethemir and Lawler joining me to break it all down. If you don't already, make sure to hit us up on all our socials, YouTube, Insta, Twitter, at Squad State before you go. And we'll see you then.